Experiment 6 is about acids, bases, and buffers. Objectives of the experiment are to measure the pH of solutions using cabbage indicator and to observe the changes in pH as acid or base is added to a buffer and unbuffered solutions. So the first part is about pH of solutions and I'm going to use first standard solutions, that's part A. And I'm going to use a 24 well plate. So the procedure is indicated in this page. You're going to use this table in this page and we will observe the color and you will identify if the solution is acidic, basic or neutral. So. Um, this is the 24 well plate. So I labeled already the paper also to guide me in terms of the pH. So this would be page 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 10, and then 12. So again, this is 4 by 6 uh, well plate. And then I have the solutions in here, page 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 10, 12. And this is the uh, cabbage juice. And then we also have a um, stair stick for the spot plates or for the 24 well plate. And I have a waste container. So I already put uh, about 20 drops of the uh, solution, page two, four, six, seven. So this actually serves as a dropper. And I'm just gonna put, so eight, So this uh, container is very convenient. You don't need a dropper for it. So I have two more samples to put in. This is page 10. So one more, page 12, I put it in this well. Okay, so now we are going to put the, um, the cabbage indicator, it's about 20 drops. So the cabbage juice is an indicator and it's purple, so this is actually red cabbage. So, okay, so we're going to put in the wells about 20 drops each. Okay. So now you are going to write the color that was page two. Page four. Page six. So now page seven. And then eight.
well okay so that's the um, the first part so I'm going to stir it to mix it up so this is just a stir stick okay so now write down the color please of each of the um, solutions the pH according to the pH so you have a range of colors so what this means is that the indicator is sensitive to the pH So we're going to save the solutions for part B. So, um, okay, so now you determine which ones, which samples are acidic, neutral, and also basic. So the next part will be part B. Part B is about pH of lab solutions. So the procedure is the same. I'm going to put 20 drops each of the solutions. And then I have here um, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, acidic acid, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, and ammonium hydroxide. And I'm going to put also 20 drops of the cabbage juice. And then we're going to identify the color of solution and then determine the pH based on the standard solutions that we have in part A. So again, we are doing pH of lab solutions, and I have six solutions. We're going to record the color of the solution once I combine, or once I mix the cabbage juice, again, equal amount, 20 drops of the solutions, and then 20 drops of the cabbage juice, and then we will identify the pH based on the standard solutions that we have from part A. And then we are going to identify from the result whether it's going to be a weak or strong acid or weak or strong base. So the first well here is hydrochloric acid and then nitric acid and then acidic acid. And then I have here sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to put... Um, the base, which is going to be, so the first base is sodium hydroxide, next is potassium hydroxide, and then ammonium hydroxide. So I also labeled the paper as hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, um, acidic acid, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, and ammonium hydroxide. We have six solutions, and uh, as a guide, so I don't uh, mix it up. So, so these are also the solutions, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, acidic acid, okay, and then sodium hydroxide, and then potassium hydroxide, and then ammonia in water, aqueous or ammonium hydroxide. Again, this one is hydrochloric acid. So they're all 0.1 molar. So nitric acid and then acidic acid. So then uh, previously, um, I had this container, so it serves as a dropper. However, this container is not the same. So I will use the um, I will use the uh, this dropper. So again, I'm I already put four solutions: hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, acidic acid, and sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to show you how I put the potassium hydroxide. So you can also do it this way. Okay, so. I use this pipette. So 20 drops. OK. 
Okay. And then uh, the last one is ammonium hydroxide. So that's this is KOH. And then this is the last one, which is the ammonia in water. Aqueous ammonia is ammonium hydroxide. So, same. Okay. So those are our solutions. And then, so we have six. And now I'm going to add again um, the cabbage juice. So we have the cabbage juice. And then I'm going to add 20 drops in each of the solutions. And then you will um, note the color. So note the color, the first one is hydrochloric acid, next one is nitric acid. And then I'm now doing acidic acid. So that was sodium hydroxide, this one is potassium hydroxide. Last one, ammonium hydroxide. So, um, so now let's review. So we have all the six solutions. So you're going to compare the color. Okay, so we are now filling up this table. Okay. So again, the first part is, the first one is hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, Acidic acid, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, ammonium hydroxide, exactly how I um, listed it here in this table. So now we're identifying the color of the solution. So this one is going to be that pH. Uh, hydrochloric acid and nitric acid are the same. So that color, while acidic acid is this color. Okay? And then sodium hydroxide. And potassium hydroxide are the same color as this solution in here. It's page 12. However, this one is slightly less green. So let's say it's more closer to this. Okay. Okay. So that's now the result from part B. And you are now going to identify it if, it's, if that solution is a weak or strong acid or weak or strong base. Part C is about pH of household products. So the same idea, we're gonna put about a mil of each of the household products and then add 20 drops of the cabbage solution and then record the, I stir it, and then record the color uh, and we're gonna compare it to the color from part A. So I still have the standard solutions up here, in here. And then these are the uh, household products. So you're going to write in this uh, table the household products. So I have like six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to determine the color of the solution once I mix it with cabbage juice, determine the pH, and then identify whether it's strong, 
weak strong acid or weak strong base. So these are the household products. Um, so write this down please, 409, formula 409. It's a uh, cleaner. And then next one is Cutex. Uh, polish remover, oil, uh, nail polish remover. Next one is milk of magnesia. Next one is going to be bathroom cleaner. Okay. So again, repeat 409, all purpose cleaner, cutex, milk of magnesia, bathroom cleaner, and then hand sanitizer. And then next one is going to be distilled white vinegar so we have six solutions so I'm gonna put in each well approximately 20 drops all right so for instance for this one so I'm just gonna do in this well one two three one two three okay so one two three in front the back is one two three so we're gonna use uh, this uh, well okay so just going to be careful that I don't contaminate the other wells. So I'm just going to approximately squirt. Okay. And then I'm going to use the dropper. So I have the dropper here for the cutex. So on the next well, okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so that's my Cutex nail polish remover and then milk of magnesia. Uh, let's see if I can use this. Okay. So on the third well, right? And then, so that's done. And then I'm gonna use this one. So maybe we should we have enough. So that's going to be in the third row. So Okay. So now that was the cleaner. And then I'm going to do the hand sanitizer. Okay. Okay, and then the uh, vinegar. Okay, so all right. So we have all the six solutions in here. So again, let's review. So exactly, I did this row and then this row at the back. So now cabbage juice, same idea. We're now going to add 20 drops. Okay, so note the color.
Okay, so that was the cutex milk of magnesia next. So now this one is this hand sanitizer. Okay. Last one is the uh, vinegar. All right. So now I'm going to stir it, stir it, that's my waist, so, okay, so I grab a couple of these, Okay, so now we're going to match the color. So now the, the first one for 09 formula is this color, matches this color here. Next one, Qtex, is matching mm, something like this color here. Now this one is more like this color. That's the milk of magnesia. Okay, now the back, the bathroom cleaner, it's actually this one here, okay. Now this one is the hand sanitizer, it's closer to this. So let's make sure that we have the right page 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 10, 12, okay. So the back hand sanitizer is matching this color. The vinegar is matching this color. So let's review. For online formula, this color, Qtex, more like this color here. This, this one, this color, this part here. This one, more like this. This one, that one. Okay? So that's basically it. And then you have to identify in this table. So again, the pH corresponding to the color and then whether that product is a weak or strong acid or weak or strong base. have this set up in here so we are going to add water in these two test tubes and then the buffer pH 7 in these two test tubes and then we're gonna add um, the cabbage juice 20 drops and then we're gonna add hydrochloric acid in the first tube sodium hydroxide in the second tube for the water and then the buffer pH 7 we're gonna add hydrochloric acid first tube sodium hydroxide, second two. So I now added five ml of the water, RO water, five ml RO water, five ml buffer, five ml buffer. So I'm now going to add um, 20 drops of the cabbage juice, okay, in here. So 20 drops, okay, so note the color.
again 20 drops initial color and then the buffer so initial color Okay, so um, now we're gonna compare the to the color that we had before. So remember, this was our result. Okay, so if you compare the color of this solution, the water, it's this color in here. So it's close to six. Okay, the same thing as this one. Right. For the buffer, it's seven. Okay. Buffer seven. Take note of the color. So zero drop. Okay, so the first one, no hydrochloric acid, that's the color that you have right now. Okay. So zero. Zero 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 okay so then we're gonna add one drop of the hydrochloric acid here on this one this tube and this tube so we're gonna be adding hydrochloric acid in here hydrochloric acid in here we compare the just the water and buffered with the buffer okay so One drop, okay. So one drop, I added one drop. Okay, so that one now is this color four, okay. All right. And then I'm gonna add in here one drop, so the buffer one drop okay so I'm going to use the steering rod okay so it's still close to seven all right if I take this out that's still close to seven did not change a lot okay for the buffer okay that's one drop now I'm gonna add we're gonna add two more drops so the second drop okay so again just hydrochloric acid we're gonna go back to this one all right so this is water Okay, so that one is now closer to two, all right? Okay. And that one was the um, drop, uh, second drop. So now I'm gonna do second drop on the buffer.
So second drop on the buffer. Okay, it's now getting closer to six. All right. Okay, but the intensity is not as much as the six. All right. So that's the uh, drop number two. So now the last drop is three drops. We go back here. So it's now intensely pink. All right. So again, I'm adding one molar hydrochloric acid. And now we're going to do on the buffer. So again, just one drop. So it's still on uh, around six. Okay. So you see the difference between this water and then the buffer. This one is really intensely pink. Okay. So we're done with the hydrochloric acid. Put it the back. Okay. So that's the result of the hydrochloric acid. We're now going to add sodium hydroxide. So the first two, again, that's the initial no sodium hydroxide. Okay. It's just the cabbage juice and the water, cabbage juice, and the buffer. So now I'm going to add sodium hydroxide. So again, we're now doing this part here. So we're doing uh, the second part to the right. And again, we're now going to do this one. So, so now sodium hydroxide, one drop. Okay, so I'm going to use this. So now it's closer to 12. It's, bit, it's in between 10 and 12. So I would say like approximately 11. Okay, so now I'm going to do the buffer. One drop. Okay, buffer page seven. So it's still around uh, seven. Okay, so I go back to the water. So now this is my drop number two. So now it's more green. Okay, so it's closer to 12 now this time. So now, drop number two for the uh, buffer. Okay, so it's still close to seven. Okay, and then drop number three, last drop for the water. So again, it's becoming more intense, which is now 12, okay? And then the last one for the buffer, okay? So it's now, I would say, let's stir it more. So it's a little bit higher than seven. It's closer to between eight and nine. It's around eight. It's still light though, so I would say uh, less than eight. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the color change for just the water is much more intense compared to the buffer. So this means that the um, the buffer is resisting the change in pH more than the unbuffered solution.